When I look at the taxation, contributions in the United States of America, and we're going to see that the exact same thing that's going on in Canada is transpiring in America. However, however in America, it's considerably easier, easier to exercise your rights. Now, most of you watching my videos, right, you know about the U.S. reservations, declarations, and understandings concerning the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Now, it states that the United States understands that this covenant, the International Covenant, shall be implemented by the federal government to the extent that it exercises legislative and judicial jurisdiction over the matters covered therein and otherwise by state and local governments. And they have to take the appropriate measures for the fulfillment of the covenant. Now remember that in the United States of America, the provisions of the covenant, Articles 1 through 27, are not self-executing. There's something you have to claim. There's something that you have to stand under and invoke in order to have the operations of law that are attached to those articles. If the matter, the subject matter that you're going through with the government is from the federal government, then the obligation falls on the federal government to allow the appropriate measures for the fulfillment of the covenant. So when you look at ta into taxation, right, into contributions, this is a federal matter according to domestic law, according to internal law. It's a federal matter. So therefore, it's the federal government that has the obligation. It's the federal government who needs to be dealt with. In the U.S. Code 7701 definitions, we're looking into that. It says, when used in this title, we're not otherwise distinctly expressed or manifestly incompatible with the intent thereof. The term person shall be construed to mean and include an individual, a trust, estate, partnership, association, company, or corporation. So when you use the word person, the term person, it can mean any one of those subjects, any one of those players. Now when you look at the term taxpayer, the term taxpayer means any person subject to an internal revenue tax. All right, so if we apply the term person to taxpayer, well, then it looks like it could mean an individual, right? Or a trust, estate, partnership, association, company, or corporation. If we just stop there, right, then where it says the term taxpayer means any person, well, we could go back up to the word person and exchange the definition there. And we can insert, well, a trust or an estate is subject to internal revenue tax, or a partnership is subject to internal revenue tax, or an association is subject to internal revenue tax, or an individual. But if we go f lower, right, and we read here trade or business, the term trade or business includes the performance of the functions of a public office. So here we're learning that if you partake in trade, or business, then the U.S. Code is declaring that you are performing the functions of a public office. So most people, right, who go to work, most people who are employed, well, they're employed in trade or in business. And therefore, if they're employed in trade or business, then they're performing the functions of a public office, according to their law. And if you're considered to be operating in a public office, then you're operating as a public officer. And therefore, you're no longer standing as an individual under your fundamental rights, but you're standing as a corporate officer. And the law is no longer recognizing you under your natural capacity. The law does not recognize you as a man or a woman.
We're looking at a court case, Rundo versus Delaware. And it states, a corporation cannot sue or otherwise contend, argue, or fight with a living natural man or woman. So the courts have already declared, right, that a corporation cannot contend or cannot sue a living man or a natural woman. Therefore, in order to sue you and contend with you in court, under the IRS, under income tax, they have to change your designation before them. They have to change your standing before them. That's why you're seeing that if you partake in business or trade, which makes you a taxpayer, then you are considered a public officer operating in a public office. This is why when we looked at the definition of the United States under the Federal Income Tax Enactment, we find the following. In U.S. Code 3001, it says, in general, except as provided in subsection B, the chapter provides the exclusive civil procedure for the United States. All right, what United States are they talking about? A geographical location or something else? And it provides the exclusive civil procedure to recover a judgment on a debt. Under this code, a debt means an amount that is owing to the United States. There it is again, right? That declaration. On account of a direct loan or loan insured or guaranteed by the United States or an amount that is owing to the United States on account of a fee, duty, lease, rent, service, sale of real or personal property, overpayment, fine, assessment, penalty, restitution, damages, interest, or tax. So you could have a debt owed to the United States for an assessment. You can have a debt owed to the United States for tax and interest on that tax and penalty on that tax because you failed to pay it. But hang on. Let's look a little bit lower here. The United States means a federal corporation or an agency, department, commission, board, or other entity of that federal corporation or an instrumentality of the United States, meaning an agency. So we're learning now, according to their own domestic laws, that when they refer to the United States and they say that you owe a debt or a tax to the United States, what they're declaring is that you owe this tax, you owe this debt to the federal corporation. It's a federal corporation in law. So that federal corporation, that's called the United States, right? According to Rundle and Delaware, well, that corporation cannot sue or otherwise contend with you if you're a man or a woman. So therefore, with the law and within the context of the law, they have to change your designation before them. They have to change your standing before them. And they change your standing from man or woman to a corporate officer operating in a public office, operating in their corporate office. And therefore, they gain jurisdiction. Now in the court case, Friedman Brothers Furniture versus Department of Revenue, the courts have declared that fraud committed in the procurement of jurisdiction is not acceptable. So they cannot commit fraud in order to obtain jurisdiction over you. And that's what they're doing, right? They're committing fraud, how? Well, they're changing your designation before them they're not allowing you to exercise your fundamental right under the International Covenant. And they're claiming that you now owe a debt to the United States. You now owe a debt to the corporate body, the United States. The United States Corporation 
wants to declare that you're committing a crime by not paying a contribution or a taxation. However, we're seeing that they're changing your designation before them and claiming that you're a public officer operating in a public office. So therefore, they're not contending with a man or a woman. But a right, the courts have already decided, cannot be converted into a crime in Miller versus the, the United States. So you are exercising your constitutional rights, your international right in Article 1 and Article 1.2 that states you don't have to contribute based on the principle of mutual benefit. And by doing so, you're exercising a right. And that right, they are not allowed to turn it into a crime. And this is a material fact, right? In the court case, it says a fact is material if proof of that fact would have the effect of establishing or refuting one of the essential elements of the cause of action. So their cause of action against you is they're claiming you're a taxpayer operating in a public office and you owe a debt, a tax debt, to the corporate body of the United States. However, material fact is that I am not operating as a public officer in a public office. And the United States, that federal corporation, is trying to contend with me and trying to sue me and collect on a tax debt, and I'm a man. And I stand as a man or a woman before you. And they're trying to force me into recognition as a public officer in a public office. However, that action goes against my fundamental right as enumerated and listed in the International Covenants, Article 16 and Article 1 and Article 47. So therefore, the United States, that corporate body, is operating in dishonor and is trying to limit and abridge my fundamental right.